Today's lesson is proving angles congruent. Take a minute to look over the learning goal and read the scale and see where you are before we start the lesson. In lesson 2-5, we learned we can use given information, definitions, properties, postulates, and previously proven theorems as reasons in a proof. Let's look at the vertical angles theorem. Vertical angles are congruent. Because angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles, they are congruent. Because angle 2 and angle 4 are vertical, they are congruent. When we write a geometric proof, it is often helpful to separate the theorem we are trying to prove into a hypothesis and a conclusion. Another way to write the vertical angles theorem would be, if two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. The hypothesis becomes the given statement and the conclusion becomes what we want to prove. Let's take a look at a two column proof for the vertical angles theorem. In this proof, we are given that angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles. We want to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Well, let's start with the given information. Angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles. Our justification is that it is given. In step 2, we know that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary because angles that form a linear pair are always supplementary. In step 3, we know that angles 2 and angle 3 are supplementary because angles that form a linear pair are supplementary. In step 4, we know the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is 180 because the sum of the measures of supplementary angles is always 180. In step 5, we know the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 is 180 because the sum of the measures of supplementary angles is always 180. In step 6, we know that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 will equal the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. That is because of our transitive property of equality. In step 7, we know that the measure of angle 1 will equal the measure of angle 3 because of the subtraction property of equality. We'll subtract the measure of angle 2 from each side. In step 8, we can prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 because angles with the same measure are always congruent. In example one, we're going to use the vertical angles theorem to find the value of x. Here, we know that this angle and this angle are vertical angles, therefore they are congruent. Let's start by writing the equation 2x plus 21 equals 4x. Next, we'll use the subtraction property of equality to subtract 2x from both sides. Finally, we'll use the division property of equality and divide both sides by 2. So x will equal 21 over 2 or 10.5. Remember to substitute the value of x, 10.5, in each expression to check your answer. Since 42 does equal 42, we know we are correct. Now pause the video and do the you try question. Okay, to find the value of x, let's start by making the equation 3x equals 2x plus 40 because the angles are vertical angles. Next, let's use the subtraction property of equality to subtract 2x from each side. So x will equal 40. Remember to substitute 40 for x to check your answer. Since 120 does equal 120, we know we are correct. In example 2, let's use the vertical angles theorem in a proof. Here, we want to prove that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, and we are given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. Let's start with the given. Next, let's look at angle 4 and angle 2. Because they are vertical angles, we know they are congruent. Since angle 1 and angle 2 are both congruent to angle 4, they are congruent to each other because of the transitive property of congruence. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 because they are vertical angles. And finally, because angle 2 and angle 3 are both congruent to angle 1, they are congruent to each other by the transitive property of congruence. Now pause the video and do you try number 2. For this proof, it is given that angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent. Angle 2 is congruent to angle 4 because they are vertical angles. Because angle 1 and angle 4 are both congruent to angle 2, they are congruent to each other by the transitive property of congruence. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 because they are vertical angles. Because angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 and angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, by the transitive property of congruence, 
angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. Finally, by the transitive property of congruence, we can prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, and angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. The proof in example 2 was a two-column proof, but there are many ways to write a proof. A paragraph proof is written as sentences in a paragraph. Let's look at the proof from example 2 written as a paragraph proof. Notice that each statement from the two-column proof is written in red in the paragraph proof. So here, angle 1 is congruent to angle 4 because it is given. Angle 4 is congruent to angle 2 because vertical angles are congruent. By the transitive property of congruence, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 because vertical angles are congruent. By the transitive property of congruence, angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. The vertical angles theorem is a special case of the congruent supplements theorem. Let's have a look at the congruent supplements theorem. If two angles are supplements of the same angle, or of congruent angles, then the two angles are congruent. So if angle 1 and angle 3 are supplements, and angle 2 and angle 3 are supplements, then angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Let's write a paragraph proof proving the congruent supplement theorem. Angle 1 and angle 3 are supplementary because it is given. So the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180 by the definition of supplementary angles. Angle 2 and angle 3 are supplementary because it is given. So the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180 degrees by the same definition. By the transitive property of equality, the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 is equal to the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. Let's subtract the measure of angle 3 from each side. By the subtraction property of equality, the measure of angle 1 will equal the measure of angle 2. Angles with the same measure are congruent. Therefore, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Pause the video and do you try number 3. Your paragraph proof doesn't have to look exactly like mine. As long as it's similar, you're good. Because we are proving the vertical angles theorem, let's start with angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles because it is given. Angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary because angles that form a linear pair are supplementary. The same thing is true with angle 2 and angle 3. They are supplementary because angles that form a linear pair are supplementary. So the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 will equal 180, as well as the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 will equal 180. This is by the definition of supplementary angles. By the transitive property of equality, the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 will equal the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. Let's subtract the measure of angle 2 from each side of the equation. By the subtraction property of equality, the measure of angle 1 will equal the measure of angle 3. Since angles with equal measures are congruent, angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. You have just proven the vertical angles theorem. These three theorems are very similar to the congruent supplements theorem. Let's have a look at the congruent complements theorem. If two angles are complements of the same angle, or of congruent angles, then the two angles are congruent. So if angle 1 and angle 2 are complements, and angle 3 and angle 2 are complements, then angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. In theorem 2-4, all right angles are congruent. So if angle 1 and angle 2 are both right angles, then angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Finally, in theorem 2-5, if two angles are congruent and supplementary, then each angle is a right angle. So if angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and angle 1 and angle 2 are supplements, the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2 will equal 90. Now is your chance to test what you've learned in this lesson. Pause the video and complete the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers. If there's anything you don't understand, please ask me tomorrow in class. 
If you feel like you really understand this lesson, go for the challenge. Now that we've completed lesson 2-6, reread the learning goal and the scale. See if you've gotten any higher from where you were when we started the lesson.